Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. This is Yusuf Chowdhury from San Antonio, Texas. So let me go ahead and flip this screen. Just give me a second. John, what's up? Janice, good to see you. Good to see you folks. All right, there you go. Rick, how you doing, buddy? Diva, Quantum, Kings. Good to see you all tonight. Janice, how are you? Rusty, good to see you again. Great. How you how how y'all doing tonight? Bridget, what's up? What's up, Diva? Hey, hey, hey. Let's see. Let's see who is this awesome person right here. Marvelous. Okay. Alright. How y'all doing tonight? Demi, good to see you. <laughs> how are you? Elizabetta. Hey, Joanne, good to see you. I was thinking about you. <laughs> about your plans. Awesome. Cool, what's going on? Let's see. What's up, Spike? Good to see you again, buddy. Melanie, thank you for joining. Okay, so let's go ahead and start real quick. Uh, so before I uh, just finish, well, yeah, <laughs> Zef, uh, yeah, Zef is awesome. So let's do this real quick because let's do a quick recap. Okay, and for those that are, that, that are new, uh, just spend a few minutes uh, to watch the scope. If you like it, then you can uh, share it or on Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, okay? I want to know how to dominate keyword. Okay, well, how about this? Let's do a quick, okay, <laughs> recap, like a name or business name. Sure, I'm definitely going to answer that for you. Here's the thing. Let's do a quick recap from yesterday. If you didn't watch my replay from yesterday, please do, because yesterday we talked about what is the keyword research, why keyword research is important. We talked about the uh, different types of key uh, keywords, and slightly, <laughs> recap, thank you, I was on the oh, Sure, yeah, I just started right now, uh, uh, Sharon. Okay, I just started right now, so, so you're on time. So yesterday we talked about you know what is a keyword what is a keyword you know keyword it's the the search term and keyword research it's a process of researching the search terms that the, that the user search in, in the search engine. Then we talked about different types of keywords. Uh, maybe touch a little bit on the tools and why the keyword research is important. And I also talked about with the Google's update you know with the latest update with the hummingbird and whatnot. Right now Google tries to understand the content. So even if you talk about golf course. And in your content, if you put something else other than golf course, uh, Google will try to figure it out and what you exactly mean. So not all the keyword has to be the same on the content. I just spoke about that a little bit, but I still believe, uh, yes, Hummingbird, it's one of the update I think was uh, last year. In fact, let me do this. Let me, um, let me share this link with you. Uh, let me share this link with you for, before you move forward. I want to make sure that, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? I want to make sure that you have this link for all the updates that Google releases. One second. Uh, I'm going to give you that link right now. Uh, hey, 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 how are you? Good to see you. How are you, Erica? So here we go. I want you folks to uh, take a screenshot of this link real quick. One second. Right here. Right there, see that? Uh, Moz.com forward slash Google dash algorithm dash change. Oh yeah, Google always update. They, they always update their, their, their uh, algorithm for all the changes. Okay, so it's very important that we all, we know those changes, even though sometimes they're very vague. They're not gonna tell you everything, but you might wanna copy this link, okay? Moz.com forward slash Google dash algorithm dash change, and it will basically show you all the updates uh, you know that Google makes uh, that causes some issues for those that don't follow correctly and for us marketers to understand exactly what what Google is doing so we can make sure that we're following their uh, standard okay <laughs> Joanne don't worry Joanne we'll take care of that stuff okay we'll take care of that so make sure you uh, write down this you know moz.com slash google dash algorithm dash change okay if you want to follow the update you're more than welcome to go to this place, okay? So make sure you do that. So, because yesterday I did talk about the importance of the keyword, but you also have to understand that Google's making a lot of changes, so the system tries to understand uh, what, what, what you exactly mean. So not every keyword has to be exactly the same on the content, right? But 
doing the research helps you understand what your customer are typing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so that was the recap, right? We talked about what is keyword, what is a keyword research, why it's important, and how it can help you with your, with your, with your marketing. Now, I talked about types of keyword. I talked about five. Well, actually, there's two. Then we divided to three more. I talked about like five types of keyword. Can somebody tell me what are those? Keyword makes my head spin, or spin, bro. <laughs> like, uh, spin. Uh, so we talked about a general keyword, right? We talked about general general keyword. That's uh, like you know, a dentist, shoe, uh, cup. Those are too general, okay? And there's no. It's not smart to try to you know. Uh, Rank for those. Then we'll talk about the the, the long tail keywords. Hey, Doctor French, how you doing? Uh, the long tail keywords like um, you know buying woman's shoe online. That's a, that's a long tail. This this is what you need to focus on. We talked about transactional keyword like you know buying woman's shoe online. We talked about informational keyword like you know how to do landscaping. That's an informational. We also talked about uh, navigational keywords. So that, let's say I want to go to Facebook. I Google Facebook, <laughs> okay, or I Google Nike website or Apple. Those are navigational. What's up, Jen? Good to see you, Jenny. So those are quick recaps. So if you didn't, if you missed it from yesterday, go to catch.me slash use of chowdery and make sure you watch uh, the scope from yesterday. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm doing good. He's my brother, Ismail. I am IC33 from back home. Say salam to my mom. Okay. He's watching from from back home. My scoping. <laughs> All right. So today we're gonna talk about. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to use Google Keyword Planner. And I'm just talking about the basic again, okay? I mean, Google Keyword Planner has a lot of features. We'll talk about the basic. But before I move forward, I want to make sure you guys write this. You want to write this and kind of stick it on your computer. Uh, this is something, a statement was made by, uh, and I love this statement by one of the SEO experts. Let's see. Where did it go? Let me find it for you folks. Okay, make sure you write it down. You ready? You ready? You ready? What I'm about to share with you folks? <laughs> Let's see. Say so what? 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 Plan what? Okay, here we go. This is this statement was made by Danny Goodwin. He's also an SEO expert. The statement that he made, and this is gonna be very simple, folks. For all, for all of you out there that are confused and lost and scared and 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 you know you know like most of us, and for those people that make SEO so complicated with you know geek talk and want to be like show off, you know that's another thing. If you focus on this rule, it is definitely going to help you on the uh, in in the long run. And the rule is very simple. So Danny Goodwin basically said, keyword research in 2015 should should start with your customers okay yeah right there sharon i mean you have these so-called expert in seo that they, they talk big and they confuse people because in the seo community we have these two forces of some people agree on th one thing some people don't and they just waste time you know you know arguing <laughs> okay but they don't even think about what's what's good for the not all of them but some of them good for the customer right no geek talk right so write this thing down keyword research in 2015 should start with your customer okay uh, like what problems, what pro what problems are they having that you can solve? Does that make sense? So start with the we'll start with your customer. What problem they're going through that I can solve? Okay, generate content around that. So you, you know your customers, you know your target market, you know the problem that they're facing, and make content, make blog, make podcast, make video, a social media update based on that content, based on solving that problem. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see, answering, okay, uh, generate content around that. Yeah, should start with your customer, what problem you can solve, excellent. And generate content around that, answer and answered questions. Reverse engineering, do you say for customers, right? Uh, answering an answered question is a big keyword opportunity because you will essentially own that keyword. So what happens when you solve a problem, when you talk about it, you know, that can become something you know, for you. So that's the most basic, simple way on how you can do a keyword research based on those ideas. If I have a target market, this is my business, and I provide this service, and I know how can I solve it, how can I make it better, what kind of content I'm going to write around that idea. Does that make sense? So if you all understand what I'm saying, or if you understood what I said, give me number one. If you did not, give me number two. <laughs> Let me go ahead and show you what I posted this. Let me... Yes, like hashtag, yeah, same thing. Absolutely, Sharon. 
So there you go. There you go. Right there. Y'all can take a step. There you go. See? One and a half. <laughs> okay. Oh, but it's like one and a half. All right. So y'all can take a screenshot of that if you want. Okay. All right. Good. Y'all took a screenshot. Perfect. I'm going to switch back. All right. Let's see. Okay, cool. So that's the first thing you have to understand very clearly. Now we're going to go to the Google Keyword Planner and we'll show you what's up, cheese. <laughs> Henry, want to take a snapshot? Cheese. Okay. All right. So now let's show you how to. Hey, welcome back, Janice. What did you miss? <laughs> what did you miss? Tell me what did you miss? Did you miss something? Erica is enjoying and laughing. <laughs> all right, all right, man. All right, let me one second. Hmm, what? All right. So right now, I'm going to show you how to use the Google Keyword Planner simply. Then another tool, and that's it. Y'all, y'all excited? Again, it's basic because I want to make sure that you understand the basic. Then we can go to the advanced later on. Okay. All right. Who is ready? What you drinking? Water. <laughs> Put number one if you're ready, and number two if you're not. Uh, throat, bro. A lot to cover. <laughs> awesome, Amira. Assalamualaikum, sister. How are you? Okay, there you go. Extra. So let me go and flip the screen. I'll show you what you guys need to go. All right, here we go. The screen for you folks. All right. So first thing first, we're gonna go to Google. You're gonna go to Google. Ah, what I'm doing? Google. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna go to Google first. All right. Did anybody use this before? We used to have this a while back for more than a year, where you talk to the browser and you do a search and it shows up. But now all I have to do, I'll, I just have to say, okay, Google. So let me go ahead and find uh, Google Keyword Planner. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, Google. Google Keyword Planner. There we go. So let me know if you guys see this. Yeah, I talked to it, which is amazing because I'm sure pretty soon Google gonna come with the tool to tell us how many people talk to Google now or the browser so we can use it, use it as a market research. I'm sure they're gonna come up with that sometime in the future because this is awesome. So did anybody see this? Yes, it is. I was gonna just leave, but I'm here. Oh my, my bro, you're so scared. Yes, Ziff says you cannot leave. Unacceptable. <laughs> All right, so did, does everybody see this? I want to make sure, does anybody see this? Or if you're on your computer, you can do it by yourself as well. If you want to follow with me step by step, that'd be great. If you all want to follow with me how to do it step by step, I think that's going to help you. So don't worry about the hearts, don't worry about the comment. I want you to implement as I'm going through. So if you all see this, give me number one. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Let's see. One, 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 one. Excellent. All right. Let's go and stop for a second. I want to make sure the comment is down so I can show you. Uh, yes, Dev, you need the Yusufat pill. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click on Google AdWord Keyword Planner. Once I do that, uh, you will see this, right? This is how it looks like. Okay. And of course, you need to have a Gmail account to log in. Okay. All right. There you go. You're ready? Let me know if you're ready. Go ahead and click on sign in to AdWord. And once you do that, of course, it will ask you what email you're going to log in with. So I selected mine. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay. So once I log in, this is the tricky part. Sometimes it will ask you to sign up with the AdWord. You need to ignore it. And hopefully you will end up being in this page right here. Just give it a few seconds. There you go. Okay. If anybody sees this, let me know. If anybody see this portion, give me number one. If you don't, number two. Excuse me. Give me number one if you see this. And number two if you don't. Okay, awesome, awesome, excellent, excellent, 
Excellent. Yes, cool. All right. What we gonna do first? Number two. What happened, Diva? Why can't you see it? What's going on? Will spinning is collecting. Okay, cool. Yes, it's the same thing, but make sure you see these options or tools. When you go to tools, when you go to oops, why oh, is not? When you go to tools, you should be able to click on keyword planner. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's from AdWord. The the keyword planner is part of AdWord. Uh, if it does that, make sure there's an option for you to skip. If it doesn't allow you to skip the AdWord, then we'll talk about that later. Okay. Sometimes it could be a Gmail account, unfortunately, you have to figure it out. Okay? Alright? Sorry about that. It has to be, yeah, it has to be a Gmail account. Alright, cool. Uh, uh, I was asking about my, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, Diva. Me and you, we're going to do one-on-one. -on -one to, I'll fix that for you because that's going to take another probably 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> okay? But uh, that's why I want to make sure that for those that are able to see it and for those that don't, that could be something with the email, but there is an option to actually skip the whole thing. And it will take it directly right here. Okay. So once you come here, as you can see, uh, Google made a lot of changes. Uh, even if you want to learn about Google Keyword Planner, you can click on, you know, how to use the Google Keyword Planner, uh, how to look for organic data. But these are all mostly text-based. It, it can help you. You can go there. But right now, I'm going to just show you the basic stuff. So what the first thing you need to do, there is a, if you skip, there should be somewhere that in a small text that says skip this process or skip. So if you don't see it, then I'm going to have to, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one with you and show you how to take care of it, okay? Okay? All right. So once I see this option right here, search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. So I'm going to select uh, this option. <clears throat> once I do that, it will ask me to what? Enter one or more of the following, uh, you know, product or services or keywords and whatnot, right? I'm gonna select, let's say, <clears throat> dog collar. Did I pronounce it right, dog collar? <laughs> Let me check. Let me check. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, I did, okay, cool. I have to go, but we'll catch the replay, bro. I need to decompress after my 200 miles go earlier. Yeah, you need to drink a lot of uh, orange juice too. <laughs> okay, all right, Ziv. Salam alaikum, sis. We'll see you later. Okay, so I'm going to type dog collar. If I have a landing page, I can put it there. I don't have to. Uh, category, that is optional. If you want to do a keyword research on a specific category, you can pick that. If you don't, you know, it's not a big deal. What I usually did, you can also select cities. Uh, I basically selected San Antonio because I want to see what's the volume search in San Antonio for my, <clears throat> for my target market. So you can do that. I selected my city, uh, all languages, uh, by default in Google. Uh, you can leave everything as it is uh, by default settings. You can leave all that. You don't have to really mess with it right now. We can go back to that later. Go ahead and click on this button right here, okay, that says Get Ideas. Once you click on Get Ideas, now Google will generate. Go to Tools, Keyword Planner. No. If you go to Tools and you see Keyword Planner, click on that. You don't have to skip. Yeah, if you if you see Keyword Planner, you can click on that. So there you go. So now Google is doing the search. And one thing you have to understand, the information that we have right now on this keyword, uh, write this thing down, they are not 100% accurate. Okay? They are not 100% accurate. They are, uh, I would say, maybe 70% rough information. Yeah, when you skip to the account, you should you should be able to see all these options. But if not, then uh, I'll, I'll definitely help you. So you need to, uh, if you don't mind, you need to DM me on Twitter, then I can walk you through. Okay. So what's happening right now? You can see for the dog collar from August, from August 2014. Oh, you're in, awesome. From 2014 all the way till July 2015, it shows you the monthly search volume for the key phrase or keyword dog collar, like 6,000 a month, you know, that's what they show. So they collect the information over the year, okay, for like 12 months, basically. Now, what's gonna happen when you scroll down, if, if all can see this, when you scroll down, you will see uh, there is something called ad group ideas. This is mainly for 
Google AdWord. This is only for Google advertising. You know, the PPC, the pay per click, that's what it's for. So you don't have to worry about that. So what you need to do, you need to click on keyword ideas. Wow. Okay, Sharon. So you click on keyword ideas. Okay. So keyword ideas here, this is the seed keyword. That means the main keyword you search for. And right here, down, right here, when you move your mouse, this will show you the trend from month to month for the for the you know for that for the key phrase like how many searches done in a particular month uh monthly search is 70 and competition you can ignore this because this is for the google adword it doesn't really reflect to you uh the price same thing for google adword okay and uh if you click this option this will give you the the price bid but again don't don't worry about that because right now you're search for the keyword or broad match that means it's broad keyword they're not exact they're not a key uh, match phrase okay that's how everything's set up by default but when you come back to the dog collar uh, as you can see <clears throat> it says in san antonio you know there's like a 70 searches for dog collar when you scroll down this is the variation of other key phrases that google is telling you beside the dog collar they're also looking for leather dog collars, cat collars, dog harness, okay? So this will give you a lot of ideas. And look how many keywords Google gave you. Look at that, 800. See, from that one word, you get like 800 key phrases. So what you do, don't look at the number. My strategy always is look at the, look at the relevancy, like which one of these are actually relevant to what I do. Which are, which are these key phrases relevant to how I solve a problem to what I, what I provide. Does that make sense? So you, you kind of look at all of them and get an idea because you have to understand what your customers are uh, are doing or typing. The same concept with the USB drive, right? Yesterday when we, when we did the USB jump drive, how each one of you give a different answer. So you actually look at all these and basically you can delete, uh, you, you, can ins you can download all this keyword in Excel file and you can basically go through all of it and remove whatever doesn't relate to you. Does that make sense? So that's how basically it will give you some ideas. Does that make sense? How simple is that? This is just very basic stuff. This is very, very basic. Very, very basic. So, so there you go. I mean, it's relevant to your product and services. Not just to me, relevant to your product and services. Does that make sense? Because you can take, you can look, you can look at this keyword. Some of them could be transactional. Some of them could be informational. Some of them could be just navigational. Does that make sense? But the idea is for you to just understand what is my target market typing when they're looking at a man color. Yeah, man color would not relate. You're absolutely correct. So what are they typing so I can write content based on those, I and those ideas and based on my pages. So if I do pet accessories, let's say one of my service page provide pet accessories and it shows there pet accessories, oh, I, I can use that because people actually are only looking for that. So I can make sure that it's in my content, it's a title, and I can also use a variation with pet accessories, something else as well. Does that make sense? So the keyword is supposed to give you some ideas and at the same time, pick the most relevant one. So what happened when you download the 800 key phrases and you go through them, you might end up having, let's say, 100 or 200, 200 keywords that you think, okay, these are most relevant to me. And if you have five pages, what did I say yesterday? If you have five pages, you're going to do what? Oh, thank you, Sam. No problem. I just, I'm in the middle. So we haven't really, we started like probably, uh, you know, 15 minutes ago. But you're more welcome to catch the replay. Um, so does that make sense? So for you, in order for you to get ideas, so whatever content you write, hopefully it's going to be searchable. Yeah, pick, there you go, Janice. You picked, if you have five pages, pick top five out of the, you know, 200 and use the rest of them for blogging, social media, hashtag, all uh, podcast and YouTube kind of redistributed outside. Okay. So, so that's one idea. So do you all have any question? Uh, you can try by yourself. Uh, I'm again, I'm just going very basic. I'm not going through the details and strategy and how to pick the best one. I'm just giving you basic stuff because you have to master the basic before you go to this next one. Okay. So if y'all have any question right now, let me know before I share with you another awesome tool that I highly recommend beside Keyword planner. So many show badges back here. Did you select your city? 
if you select your city, it could show you that this is what people in your city are looking for. Does that make sense? Okay. So, any question about the Google Keyword Planner? Very simple, right? I mean, it's not that complicated, but again, you have to make sure that you pick the right one. I'm writing down words now to search keyword. Yes. Hey, G, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay. All right. So, okay, you have a question, Demi. Go ahead. What's your question? What is your question? Your question, question. Behind you, noticing your badges. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> a bunch of badges there. Distracting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, again, I want to make sure that all of you that are watching this understood how to do a basic keyword research. Okay? Don't worry about the numbers at the beginning. Look at the relevancy. You can download them. Then you can, yeah, so many badges. Yep, conferences and whatnot. But, um... Uh, Look at the relevancy and, and pick the one you believe is most relevant to what you provide, to what you solve for your customers, and use the rest for your content marketing. Does that make sense? And Joanne yesterday made an excellent point that should I write for the search engine or should I write for my audience? And the answer is always, you always write for your audience. You always write for your customer. Does that make sense? You write it for them. Then you can go back and if you want to sprinkle with some relevant keyword, you can. But like I said, I mean... Google right now tries to understand what you're talking about, okay? Thank you. So so if you have any question, let me know before I show you one more keyword. And after that, we're going to, uh, you know, leave uh, leave the rest for the Q&A, okay? <laughs> okay? Because there's so many other keyword tools that I want to share with you, and this is free. The Google Keyword Planner is free, okay? But I also want to share some uh, premium tools that can actually help you even further, okay? The reason I'm talking about this because it's very basic, and you can play with it and mess with it and, 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 and go ahead and do that. Go to the Google Keyword Planner and do the research and ask me any question if, if you get stuck or if, if something doesn't make any sense. Yes, absolutely, Diva. Once you get in, then you can get the feel of it. Then then please, uh, hey, Wanda, how you doing? Thank you for joining tonight. Then please, you know, uh, tweet, uh, send me a Twitter message or just publicly tweet it to me and I'll be more than happy to answer and, and give you anything that doesn't make any sense, okay? But for now, one more thing. Any more question before I show you another tool? I hope you can get in soon. It's great contact. Yes, please contact and, and tour, and I'm more than happy to answer it. Answer it I'm I, I, I guess it's getting that. I'm getting tired. I can't even talk. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Okay. Any questions? Number one. No question. Number two. Okay. Okay, number one, if you have no question, and number two, if you have questions, go ahead and type it down, comment. Number two, you have a question. Okay, what's the question? It's my water. Okay, oh, a lot of questions. All right, I'm ready. Hit me. Hit me with those questions. Yeah, if you have question, number two. If you don't have a question, number one. <laughs> Maybe I missed it. You said the opposite? Okay, I'm really sorry. Right, let's do it again. If you don't have a question, number one. If you have a question, number two. <clears throat> okay, let's <laughs> watch number three. Almost like number three. What is that in between? Awesome. Okay, cool. So no question, right? Okay. Hey, what's going on, man? Let's see. What's up, Nate? All right, cool. So let me show you, there's another awesome tool, okay? Let me show you this real quick. This will help you a little bit to understand the long tail keywords. One second. There you go. Make sure you take a snapshot right the, or, or write this one down. Keywordtool.io. Keywordtool.io. Make sure you write it down. Okay? Write it down. For those that are in front of the computer, go ahead and check it out. Okay, keywordtool.io. All right. So the cool thing about this tool, it gives you keyword research in Google, in YouTube, what's in Bing, and what's in App Store, like, you know, Apple App Store. It's pretty cool, okay? So we can take the same example of dog collar, okay? 
And let's see if you can give me long tail. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Carol. Keyword tool.io. Okay. So it will give me variation ideas for search term. Okay. So the keyword is dog collars, but the search term is dog collar, right? This is the one we did the search for, but look at the variation. Dog collars with name, dog collar sizes, dog collar with nameplate. So these are the long tail keyword that might have a low volume search, but the conversion is higher. Does that make sense? Was, was this in there? <laughs> okay, so I love this tool because off the bat, it can just give me a better idea for long tail keyword because I told you guys yesterday, long tail means three to four words is much better in terms of conversion than just one word. Yes, it does look kind of fake. What is fake? What happened fake? Is you guys said somebody fake. I'm kind of lost. Me lost. So, dog collar with names, dog collar sizes, uh, with nameplate, GPS, Etsy, Walmart, Amazon. Okay, the website is, there you go. It's uh, keywordtool.io. Okay, keywordtool.io. Okay, so they do have only this free version, but for the paid version, like if you want to find out the search volume and the cost per click and the competition, then you have to pay it. But other than that, you can use the free version too. Okay, keywordtool.io. I like it so much because I can get so many ideas from this. And this is not a suggestion. This is what actually been searched in the, let's say, in Google. In, in Google. If you do YouTube videos, let's go to YouTube. Okay, let's go to YouTube and do a search in YouTube, in the United States, in YouTube, and see what we get. Look at that. Dog collar match. Dog collar shock on man. Dog collar challenge. Dog collar power card, you see? Dog collar prank. These are the keywords are done uh, search in YouTube. So imagine if you're, if you're using YouTube marketing or if you wanna do YouTube videos, don't you think this is gonna be a good idea to use some of these on your title? <laughs> yeah, shock on man, <laughs> yes. See, match Rudy Piper. Dog collar match Rudy Piper. Okay, Miami Dolphin dog collar bandana. Philadelphia Eagles dog collar banda banda bandana, you see? So this is an awesome free tool that I found and I think it's really helpful, uh, especially when you're on YouTube or if you want to look for a long tail keyword, if you want to see in Bing, what, what do people search in Bing, which is in from Microsoft, right? There you go. The search is a little bit different, you see? The searches in Bing is a little bit different than Google. So I highly recommend that you guys use this awesome tool to kind of help you to come up with some uh, uh, you know, good content for your, oh, well, okay, you want to go to App Store? Okay, Omar, one second. One second. And there's so many tools I can share with you guys, but I want to keep it, you know, master it, then go to the hard one, okay? One at a time. So the App Store, let me see what's in the App Store. Okay, come on, come on, App Store. Wow, that's it. There you go, that's it. In App Store, bar, and dark color, commodity, subculture, Jane Dillon, best home business, dark color crime, the dark color murderers, could be games. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's in the app store, man. Not a lot. Uh, let's see. All right, so, oops. Uh, I it's another extension. You know, I, I, I don't, I forgot what it stands for. I, I forgot what I stands for. One second. What? Uh, I have to Google this, <laughs> Joanne. Oh my God, let's see. Stand for define IO. What is this? Hmm. What does IO stand for? Da -da -da -da. Input and output? No. What does IO stand for? Uh, you have to ask Joanne, huh? <laughs> uh, domain name. Making homework, Joanne. Yeah, uh, let's see. Quickly, what? Uh, why are startup turning into IO? IO has become one of the hottest domain name extension for startup. Oh, startup for startup companies. This is a little peculiar. Existence in 2007. Okay, so hmm. it still doesn't tell me what it stands for, but most of the startup uses it. Okay, startup companies. Uh, okay, cool. So that's it, folks. Remember. You have to optimize your pages for particular 
for a particular uh, key phrase within your site. If you're selling dog collar, then you're going to talk about the dog collar. You're not going to talk about man collar. <laughs> right? So, so there you go. So those two tools, uh, use the Google Keyword Planner. Play with it. Let me, let me know if you have any question. You can also go to uh, keywordtool.io uh, because you want to think about those long tail keywords to get you more ideas. You know, like writing a blog post and uh, thank you, thank you, Sharon. Writing a blog post, making YouTube videos with that same keyword, uh, you know, podcasts and whatnot. Okay, but do understand that that Google is becoming very smart. Specifically, of course, Bing is different and Yahoo is different. That sometimes you don't have to put the exact keyword on all the content the same. You can sprinkle it with, you can rephrase them. That's fine. I would love a scope on keyword branding, specifically like a biz name or a personal name. If a personal name is much easier, actually, like for myself, like my own name, uh, that one, you have to build it. What I mean by that, you have to put so much value out there, like blogging and content, and that's how it's going to build up. You know, does that make sense? Because the brand, if you are a brand, if you're a new person, new business, your brand is not going to be that popular. Once people get to know you, share your content and watch you, then they're going to search your name. Then that's how that brand can be searched in, in Google. So when you go to Google Keyword Planner and you type your, your keyword and it shows up how many search, then it becomes like, okay, my brand is searchable, right? But for a beginner, it's not going to be well known. Does that make sense? And it's not hard. All you have to do just, like in, with your situation, you do a lot of awesome scope on food. That's why I said start a WordPress blog, putting awesome content, uh, Instagram videos and pictures and Pinterest and whatnot and, and write those recipes under your brand name and just stay consistent and eventually within a couple of months you will see that people now are searching for your brand name with with the organic keyword. Does that make sense? Because I have several clients that they rank organically but they also rank for their brand name. So so the customer go to Google and they type the actual name of their business and that's how they show up. Does that make sense? So that's how you actually uh, build a brand. And uh, you have to make sure when you optimize all the pages on the back end and submit sub, submit to Google through Google Webmaster Tool, within a week when, when somebody type your name, it will show up, okay? So we can show you how to do that. But remember, you need to have that website, and uh, if you need any help with that, let me know, uh, because I helped Bridget how to set up a basic site, and I think me, Roberts, also needed some help, but if you want us to walk you through how to you know make your site within 24 hours, we're more than happy to show you how to do that, okay? All right, folks, so that's it. Uh, I have five to 10 minutes for Q&A. I hope this uh, scope was beneficial. Please take action. Go to the keyword planner, excuse me, and the keyword tool that I O. Just mess with it. Put, uh, you know, get some information, and let me know how can I help you. Like, where do you want to sprinkle them? Where do you want to put them on the site so I can guide you and tell you exactly how you can um, optimize those and what you can do with the rest, like you know, hashtag and other content marketing stuff, you know, outside your site. I'm having issues with Google Name Search. I don't understand, Joanne. What do you mean? Can you please explain? What do you mean I have issues with Google name search? Help me. Explain to me, please. All right, folks. Q&A time. Q&A time. This is my uh, happy face. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Surprise face. Okay. There you go. Losing connection, sorry about that. Uh, the connection here is a certain name you use. So before you go to the key, uh, the, the, the Google Keyword Planner, Joanne, just go to Google and tap that name and see if it shows up. If it doesn't, then we need to index it. Mm. All right, folks, thank you. Thank you so much for staying tonight. And right now we have a Q&A session. So I'll give you all five to 10 minutes. So feel free to ask me any questions. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Uh, okay. All right, folks. Anything else? Anything else I can help you with? I'm sorry. Did you comment, <laughs> Joanne? I'm And for those who thinks and enjoyed this uh, scope, feel free to share it in your Twitter and Facebook. I would appreciate it. What should I talk about tomorrow?
Hmm. What should I talk about tomorrow? I'm trying to think. Oh, actually, tomorrow. Tomorrow there is a workshop. It does not show up. Only the Twitter account shows up. Okay, DM me the name. Let me do a quick search. Okay. But tomorrow, not the website. Okay, how to, how to download a unique keyword like name pre-launch. How to download a unique keyword like name pre-launch. Um, anything, here's the thing. When you talk about keyword, most of the search, so when someone Googles, Googles it, you are good to go. The thing is, if it's a brand new website, there is a way that you can be found under the brand name, but people have to know your brand first. So that's how you do promotion. That means you do like advertising and marketing and social media to to kind of get people get to know you. Does that make sense? If nobody knows about your product, they're not gonna they're not they're gonna look for you. But the other thing is, if your product has some sort of search term, like people looking for, let's say, uh, uh, vegan eBooks or how to do vegan food, right? And they're searching for that key phrase, and you have that information in your website. There's a chance that you'll show up. But when it comes to SEO. It's not going to happen right away. When you, when you implement search engine optimization, it will take probably several months for your website to be on the front page or for your website to get some traffic because SEO takes some time. It, will, it can take a month and a month. It can take three months. It can take six months. It will take some time because you're building the seed. You're building the content one step at a time. If you want fast results, all you have to do is Google AdWord. You pay Google for the click or you do Facebook advertising. You, that, that way you'll get fast results. That means you'll get traffic quickly. You know, people that are interested in you, will, they'll find you quickly, okay? But you have to spend more money in those ads. I think it would be best if you use Facebook advertising because it's much affordable than Google AdWord. Does that make sense? So that was an excellent question. Uh, Joanne, thank you for the chewy. Let me see. What was here? What's going on here? Growth cast, thank you for joining. I'm almost done. I am almost done. I appreciate that you're joining in tonight. We're talking about how to use Google Keyword Planner. Basically, so let me see, Joanne. Uh, let's see. Just want everything set up for a name search. Yeah, that's. I mean, if, uh, if you give an example, the name, the name of your website, it, it'll be searchable. But again, people have to know who you are. Does that make sense? But but we need to make sure that you index it properly. Yeah, Facebook is actually good. <laughs> Facebook AdWords is not bad, uh, Sharon. If you do it right, it's actually much affordable, and a lot of my customers are making like good conversion. It's much affordable than AdWord. Okay, it's much affordable than uh, AdWord. Okay. Oh, it's uh, it's not. It's not. It's not. The, oh, okay. I see what you're saying, Joanne. Because if your name is, you know, my name is, you know that that your name should be searchable. Do you guys know this? That your name is searchable. Because if I go to any conference and I meet you for the first time, the first thing people do or I do, Google you. So make sure you Google your name right now. Go to Google. It depends on strategy. I mean, I'm telling you, Facebook ad is really powerful. So if you didn't get any success, let me know. But if you did, if you did get success, then scope about it because I'm telling you, I mean, most of my clients got good returns, you know, in terms of conversion and whatnot. But try to do this, folks. Really go to Google and Google your name. Okay, go to Google and Google your name and see what comes up. Sometimes you're surprised. You can also Google my name because I dominate from the first page all the way till the eighth. <laughs> I feel bad for the other user Chaudhary. You know, because they, they don't show up. feel very bad for them. Maybe like one or two. But I dominate the whole page from the first till the eighth. Ha! Huh. You might wonder how. How can you control... You, unfortunately, you can't control the outcome. That's a very good question. You can. Why is Twitter account more popular in search than website? Just watch Blab on Facebook ads. Will, uh, will Arish has less Facebook ads. Okay. Um, uh, Joanne... As, uh, comment that question again. I didn't understand what you said. Comment that question again. There's two types of search right now. People go to search engine like Google, Bing, Yahoo to look for information. So that's search done in the search engine. It is not the same thing when you go to Twitter or Facebook. That's their own platform. Does that make sense? Uh, right now, Google and Twitter partnered, uh, I think it was this year, that they talked about having some of the Twitter information to be seen in Google search. 
You should be able to control the Google search on a business name to some extent. When you say control, I don't understand what you mean control. I mean, if, if your brand name comes up, yes, that will come up. Does that make sense? You cannot hide it. Maybe I'm not understanding the question. My name is very popular. Sharon is a popular name. So your full name is very popular. My, the Twitter account is showing in Google search, but not the website. Uh, that's a good question, Joanne. Because, you know, Twitter, first of all, is a high authority. They are like probably number three or four in search, in ranking, and is attached to the name. Does that make sense? So if the website is not showing up, that basically means the website is not indexed. Maybe the website don't exist. Maybe the domain doesn't exist. Does that make sense? There could be so many reasons. And plus, this is Google. Google decided to show that. <laughs> Does that make sense? We don't have control of what Google want to do. I mean, I mean uh, get your brand page to the first page of Google. Yes, I mean, to, to get your brand page is easy. It's not going to take that long. I mean, brand page, if you... Uh, how do I... Uh, how to get indexed? Well, we need to optimize the pages, Joanne, and submit to Google Webmaster Tool. Uh, to to have your website, let's say you some charter, or let's say uh, Ninja Dentist. Okay, Ninja Dentist, the brand name. Uh, if I do everything correctly on the back end for the SEO, like the on onsite optimization, and if I submit to Google Webmaster Tool for indexing, yes, I'll be indexed. If I tap my uh, Ninja Dentist before I finish it, it will show up. That's easy. That's not hard, you know. But what I'm going to explain, is your brand popular for people to search the brand name? See, people don't search for the brand name. People search for, like, the same idea when I give for, for the USB. If somebody wants to look in for the USB, they're going to type uh, sticky memory, flash drive, jump drive to find this. That's how people search. Uh, let's see. Does Google make us pay to rank? No. Google will make you, Google make, don't make you. Um, that's, that's, no. <laughs> Joanne. The only, okay, let's think about the example where you, uh, where you Google name a biz or personal. Yeah, that's going to show up because the reason going to show up quickly. How, how would you control the pages listed? I don't understand what you mean by how, the, I don't understand what you mean by how would you control the pages listed? I don't understand that question. The first page is, is, uh, is me. Okay, the first page is you. Joanne, the only thing you pay Google is the Google AdWord. So when you pay Google for the click, yes, you're going to show up on the ad section within 24 hours. Okay, you don't pay Google to rank you organically. There's no such thing. Does that make sense? Organic uh, ranking happens because of the on-site SEO, outside SEO, content marketing and whatnot. Does that make sense? That's my first name and then the keyword. When I said look for your name, look for your full name. Like type your full name. Okay, and see what comes up. Okay, type your full name and see what comes up. And the reason Twitter is ranking, because Twitter has a high authority. I mean, they get millions of hits. And your, your name is there. Of course, it's going to show up. Like my Facebook shows up. My LinkedIn shows up. Because those are high authority sites. And of course, my website shows up too. Because my website is indexed and everything. But that doesn't mean I get all the traffic. Does that make sense? I would rather have somebody look for a, a search term to find me than just to look for my brand. I would consider brand to be the, the second priority not the main priority the main priority i want people to find if i'm a dentist if somebody typing san antonio dentist and i show up good i got a customer uh best dentist san antonio i showed up oh i got a customer does that make sense then after they get to know me then they can start typing the brand and the brand will also uh the search volume for the brand will also show up but we need to understand what your customer type like for, for instance with your food uh the food that you make the recipe what do they look for in google so i can be found for them so when they're searching, because there are like millions of sites competing for it, I want to be found for what they're looking for. I want to be found for my customer that is that that looking for my stuff or for my service and for my product. Does that make sense? Question, please ask again. I'll do my best to answer it again. You might have to even do a blab sometime, right? You got to do a blab so we can t talk, all of us. What do you guys think? We should do blab sometimes so we all can jump in and ask questions rather than just texting. I know. That could be much better, right? Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have. Okay. So what happened? Looks like the connection froze. Give me some heart if you're still there.
Do, do, do. Okay. Sorry about that. Looks like the connection got dropped, right? Okay. Are y'all having issues with the connections? I don't see any comment anymore. <laughs> All right. So thank you for the hearts. Appreciate it again. Uh, do apologize if you have, if you're having some issues with the connection, though. That's weird. Wow. <clears throat> ah, very choppy reception again tonight. Full battery, maybe it's press scope. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry, sorry. Okay. All right, no problem. If you all have a connection problem, then. Okay, no problem. If you guys can uh, please check the replay, just go to catch.me forward slash Yusuf Chowdhury. You can forward and rewind, so it'll be easier for you. So you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can just move forward and move backward and see it from there, okay? So sorry about that. All right, folks, thank you so much. Um, if you still have any more question, uh, we are talking about dominating a unique name. Yes, to dominate the unique name is not hard. Uh, that can be done. Uh, but what, I'm, what I mean by that, when somebody typed the, the 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 brand name, it will show up. That's not hard because it's not that popular. That's what's going to show up. You're most welcome, uh, Carol. If you all have any question, please feel free to you know send me a direct message in Twitter or just tweet it publicly, whatever you like. Go ahead and have fun with the uh, Google Keyword Planner and the uh, Keyword Tool .io. And please watch the replay. And uh, the cool thing about the Catch Me, you can forward, you can rewind. And if you do watch the replay, do me a favor, share them as well. Okay. Uh, you're most welcome, Ray. Yes, the catch me is a huge help because the quality will be still good. Uh, so please watch those. And um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, I'll talk about... Uh, because tomorrow, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow, I won't be able to scope because tomorrow, uh, I have a guest speaker, uh, Michelle Lowry. And she will talk about the robot.txt file for one of the on-site SEO stuff. Would you love to do a scope on that? Yes. Well, I will definitely do that. And if I was also asking you guys, if you want, if you want, if you all want to do a blab, so you all can jump in and ask questions, I think that'd be much better. What do you all think? Maybe you can do the same topic in blab, so you can open your laptop. You don't have to use the phone. You can just open your laptop and jump in and ask questions, right? I think that'd be much better because I know some of you typing. And unfortunately, sometimes I don't understand the question. It makes it difficult for you all. And I apologize for that. But I guess if you jump to Blab and ask the question, I think it'd be much easier. You all agree? So maybe we'll make some plan uh, next week, if possible, uh, to do some sort of Blab. In fact, to be honest with you, I'm starting a workshop tomorrow. Yeah, I'm starting a workshop tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central Time, then Friday, all the way to the 30th. So every night, I'm going to have a live streaming of the workshop, so I won't be I won't be able to do the actual scope like this. But I'll try if I have time. Okay, so I'm going to live uh, broadcast the meetup workshop. So tomorrow, the topic will be robot.txt file. Are you hiding from Google? I have a guest speaker. She will come and talk about this uh, session, and I'm going to just basically uh, point the phone at her so she can just talk and y'all can listen. Okay, and if you have any question, maybe after her workshop, I can jump in. But we can also plan on. Um, blab sometime because that'll be much much easier for you excuse me for you folks to kind of you know jump in and ask questions rather than the texting okay because i've seen some of you are very excited and a lot of question to be asked and if you ask in you know with yourself i think it will make more sense than just you know typing the question okay all right well thank you so much if you need any help with your website you want me to check it you know give you some feedback have any question go ahead and apply what you learned today remember keep things very simple then eventually and slowly we're going to end up 
you know, being a master at what we're going to do. So just take one step at a time, learn one bit by bit, then eventually you're going to learn the advanced stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you so much, y'all. And um, have an awesome night. And make sure that you help somebody else. And y'all have been usified. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> Come on. This was a basic, Joanne. Okay, cool. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for staying. And thank you for the hearts. And thank you for sharing as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care.